are so many terrains and territories in architecture that are yet to be explored. Anxiety to Architects has never been afraid of taking calculated risks. When we design, we love working for clients who are incredibly ambitious because it pushes us beyond our ordinary boundaries. The office's aspiration of creating an architecture of movement and of fluidity is something that pervades the projects throughout. Anything is possible. The culture of Zadid Architects is a very open network of young professionals, very ambitious, very self-driven. Our office, you know, we have many applicants from everywhere. They come from all over the world and it makes a very nice atmosphere because I think people feel here that everybody can bring something to the table. We are a global design brand of 450 people operating across all continents. We had always known that the direction we are taking is the future of architecture and that has been borne out now with respect to the great resonance and great success we've been able to achieve while we're still at the peak of our powers. The design philosophy is geared to our time, to a new time of dynamism, complexity, to contemporary network society. We're operating on urban scale, architectural scale, but also we go into the interior scale, even all the way down to furniture and products. Our vision of the built environment is that it should have the same coherence and intricacy as nature. We're an office that's obsessed with innovation. If we did it last year, we don't want to just be doing it again this year. A discipline like architecture is a theory-led discipline. As a teacher, you can only open the door a bit for someone to see what could happen beyond ideas. We need to have the capacity to scan the scientific literature and then build algorithms and tools which we then distribute to the office. What is also interesting is how to do a programmatic invention, because I think that is what is, I think, most exciting. We also have an in-house research group, CODE, Computational Design Group. The brief was to be able to not be a specialist group, but be a design research group. CODE is important in the range of things that it tries to do between finding ways of generating shape and form and predicting its performance. With computers, we were able to predict shapes without actually having to make physical models, cutting down a lot of trial and error uh, time. The Venice Biennale is a very important architectural event where a lot of architects come together to discuss or exhibit their own work. So we were looking at paper as a way of finding or making things out of sheet material. Essentially, like all designers are in, in a way hackers. They try and use their intuition to put things together. The built environment we live and move through is, is a totality. The space, the artifacts, the products, even the fashion, the way we appear on the scene is all part of a new world, a new way of life, and we want to have our finger in all of these aspects, which together create the phenomenal world we live and breathe. Zaha Did Architects have invested a lot in cutting-edge technology, digital modeling, and file-to-factory fabrication processes. In every project that we do, we try and push the boundaries of what we can do, how quickly we can do it, and we see the technology as a means of achieving that. We're entering into kind of innovation, the material innovation, how you use materiality in a very different and an innovative way. And to use also innovative materials like glass, for instance, where glass has been thermoformed according to molds which have been delivered by the digital model. And Innsbruck Stations is an interesting example here. So here we have a thermoformed glass which generates a fluid body. Another interesting project to mention is our collaboration with Chanel for the Chanel Mobile Art Pavilion. The unusual thing here is that it's a lightweight modular structure which has been built and rebuilt in different locations. It can be quickly reassembled, demounted and reassembled again. One of the most fascinating projects we're currently engaged with is that mega yacht with Blom and Foss. It's the height of elegance and lifestyle. 
So that kind of yacht is a fully designed universe, a compact microcosm. The BMW project was really about really looking at not just organizing the plan, but combining uh, blue color workers with white color workers and how they all stream through one space. And the whole purpose of that for BMW is that you get better communication, more openness in terms of product development. We interpret their program, where well, they thought it would be an ideological kind of way of working into a way of organizing the building. Innovation Tower for the Hong Kong Polytechnic is our new extension of the campus there. So what's important to us here is that space of communication where you have these voids, three different voids cutting through the building. So I really have deep vistas layered in the depths of space, below, above and all around to scan what's going on and to make choices about the interactions and events one would like to participate in. We are here in the center of Seoul to open our new building, the Dong Demon Design Center. This is one of the examples of this new style of parametricism. It allows an architecture to be organic, fluid, and adaptive to a complex configuration of the site, the topography, the richly differentiated program, yet bind it all seamlessly together through complex curvature to achieve calmness in the center of a highly networked space of communication. Our new cultural center for Azerbaijan and Baku expresses our ability to bring together three components into one connective institution. It's a library, convention center, and a museum. They kind of merge into one. So the landscape literally crawls up the edge of the building. It's very exhilarating. What we have built up is a global network of collaborating engineers who have special machinery which we developed with them or we found them to integrate in our delivery process. The Galaxy Soho required a paradigm shift on the client side because of the nature of its design. It was the first really curvaceous design they were attempting. They needed to buy into the idea that there would be a process that would allow us to implement that design. And that process on one hand was the adoption of the 3D platform as a foundation for documenting and resolving the geometry, but also using it as a vehicle for getting the project built downstream. All of these software tools are there to, to manage the complexity, to make it quantifiable, to make it predictable, so that we deliver projects both where the client can visualize it, they can see it, they can have walkthroughs through it. In the end, Galaxy Soho is a, is a very good example of how we can deliver projects around the world. CAPSARC is the home for a brand new think tank that's been made by the Saudi Arabian government. You have these atria and these courtyards that mark all of the different office areas within the building. And so that gives me a real sense of connectivity. I think these informal connections and chance meetings are where a lot of creativity and brilliance tends to happen in organizations. If you're in the business of the future, you can't ignore sustainability. It's crucial when you make the architecture express the sustainability, not just through putting some solar panels on the roof, but actually you change the entire shape of the building. We managed to do a 42% reduction of the energy that's actually used to operate the building compared to what an ordinary box of a building would have done. It, we do focus on reducing the energy use, but it's very, very important for us that actually the human element is there. Working in Saudi Arabia on CAPSARC has been incredible, and I think one of the core values of our office is bringing incredible architecture to people in all different parts of the world. We are at the top of our game. We're young, dynamic, we're skilled up. We're creating the endless forms, a huge, fertile and expansive repertoire of spatial organization and articulation which we could bring to bear. This realm of discovery is kind of almost endless. If I could summarize working at Zaha Hadid Architects in one word, it would have to be dynamic. Dreams. Creation. We're unique. This company is a vision. Freedom. Energy. Extreme. Ambition. 